JCB Lodals are one of the UK's favourite construction machines. And no wonder, available in a huge range of different styles and sizes, the versatile telehandler offers you all the durability, versatility and safety that you need to compete in today's competitive construction market. Naturally, you'll want your JCB load all to spend as much time as possible at work, not in the workshop. That's why these machines have long service intervals, and when maintenance does need to be carried out, you'll find it quick and easy to perform. The aim of this training video is to assist you, the machine operator, to understand daily checks before operating the machine. It's your daily duty and responsibility to ensure you and your work colleagues stay safe. A badly maintained machine is a danger to you and the people working around you. Daily checks help maintain site safety and prevent unnecessary machine downtime. The content of this video is for general information purposes and guidance purposes with the aim of raising safety awareness and understanding of daily checks in connection with telehandlers with standard fork attachments. This does and should not replicate or substitute formal certified training. The information given in this video is as is, without any express or implied warranties other than to the extent that JCB cannot legally disclaim liability. Operators must always refer to the manual before operating the machine. Maintenance must only be carried out by suitably qualified and competent persons. While carrying out daily checks, the following personal protective equipment must be worn in conjunction with the site's regulations. Boots with steel toe caps. Appropriate site clothing with long sleeves. High-vis jacket or vest, hard hat, safety glasses, protective British standard nitrile gloves whilst handling oils and grease, hearing protection if your sight requires it. This video contains eight sections, each broken down into individual daily checks. The video can be paused at the end of each section for any questions. Before carrying out a visual inspection of the machine, the machine needs to be parked on safe and level ground, ensuring you and the surrounding area are safe and away from any other vehicles. Unlock the cab. Ensure the ignition key is removed. The handbrake is fully applied. And the battery isolator key is removed. These checks make sure the machine cannot be started or moved without your knowledge or consent. Starting from the cab, ensure the doors, steps and cab glass are not damaged and that the fuel cap is securely fitted. Check all four tyres for the correct tyre pressure using the supplied tyre pressure gauge. Correct tyre pressures can be easily found on the in-cab charts. Look for any signs of damage to the side walls, such as distortion. Check security of the wheel nuts. Look for cuts or embedded objects in the tread. Remember to also check the inside wall of the tyre. Report any defects. If your machine has stabiliser legs, it's important to check the hoses are free from damage and the pivot pins are secure. Stabiliser legs increase stability of the machine, making it safer to lift to height. Check the boom front sensor if fitted. Check auxiliary hoses are not damaged and are free from leaks. The carriage is the working tool of your load all, and it is critical it is in good working order. Check the carriage locking bars. These hold attachments to the carriage. Check the fork bar locking handles work. These are very important as they lock the fork bar in place, preventing the forks from coming off the carriage. Inspect the forks for damage and wear. While walking around the machine, check for any damage to components, including lights, mirrors, engine cover and base. Any damaged parts should be reported and corrected immediately. Ensure no oil leaks are present on or under the machine. 
Leaks will show on the ground, but always take time to check the underside of the machine, ensuring belly guards are not damaged. Make sure any defects found during this inspection are reported and corrected. Once you're happy with the machine visual inspection, the next stage is checking fluid levels in the engine bay. The machine must be parked on safe and level ground. Ensure the ignition key is removed, the handbrake is fully applied and the battery isolator key is removed. These checks make sure the machine cannot be started or moved without your knowledge or consent. The machine fluid levels should be checked every morning before starting the machine. Each site should hold the relevant oils and coolant so that the levels can be maintained. The correct fluid types can be found in the operator's manual. Remember, while checking any machine fluids, the correct PPE must be worn. Ensure any spills are cleaned up and waste disposed of correctly. Open the engine cover. You'll need some clean rag or paper roll to check oil levels. The engine oil dipstick is located to the rear of the engine. Remove the dipstick and clean off. Dip back in, fully pushing the dipstick home before removing again to read. The level should be on the upper mark on the dipstick. Replace the dipstick. Carefully loosen the cap on the expansion tank and let any pressure release from the system. Remove and replace the cap. The level should be on the max mark on the side of the header tank. If a top-up is required, add the recommended coolant and fill up to the maximum mark. The transmission fluid should be checked with the engine warm, but it is good practice to check the system has fluid first. Remove the dipstick and clean off. Dip back in, fully pushing the dipstick home before removing to read. Fluid should show on the upper mark on the dipstick. Repeat this check once the engine has run for five minutes, allowing the system to fill. Dip one minute after turning the engine off. Check the fuel filter water trap every 50 hours. If water is present, then this should be drained by unscrewing the drain tap under the sight glass. Drain any water into a container, close the drain tap and reconnect the sensor. Make sure the air filter inlet is free from debris and damage. The filter needs to be checked every 50 hours and replaced if necessary. Visually check around the engine bay for any leaks and possible problems. Now all the engine bay checks are complete, close and lock the engine cover. Move to the rear of the machine to check the hydraulic fluid level. The filler is located inside the rear access door. To check the level, start to remove the cap and allow any pressure to release. Take off the cap and wipe the dipstick before dipping back into the hydraulic tank. The level should be between the two marks on the dipstick. Some machines have a sight glass. Fluid should be visible through the glass. The brake fluid reservoir is located in the toolbox panel on the front of the cab. To release, pull the release handle in the cab. In here, you'll also find the washer bottle filler cap, the wheel brace and grease gun. Check the brake fluid level is to the maximum mark. If not, only top up with JCB Hydraulic Fluid HP15. Do not use ordinary brake fluid. If you have to top up the brake reservoir frequently, get the brake system checked by your JCB dealer. Do not use the machine until the fault has been put right. In this section, you'll have to check your machine's operation. These checks must only be carried out by a trained operator. If at any point you do not understand a check or test, please refer to the operator's manual. Having carried out the walk-around inspection and fluid level checks, the cab is next. Before entering the cab, replace the battery isolator key. When entering and exiting the cab, you must have three points of contact with the machine at any one time. 
The driver's seat is part of the cab's safety system and must be checked. Ensure it is free from damage and works correctly. Check the seat fully adjusts forwards and backwards and the seat back adjusts. Fasten the seat belt. Make sure it locks and check with a tug. Test the horn to ensure other site members and road users can hear you. Check all the window wipers and washers are working and top up washer bottle as required. Visibility is important for site safety. All lights need to be checked to ensure they're in working order, including the beacon. Get a colleague to help check the rear lights. There are two different JCB immobilizer systems. One uses a keypad and the other a unique key system. Before you disarm the keypad immobilizer, make sure you know your four-digit security code. Do not operate the buttons with sharp objects, as they may damage the keypad. To disarm the keypad immobilizer, put the key in the ignition and turn to position 1. Push the MD button on the keypad and enter your four-digit security code. Press the Enter button. The green LED will come on and the machine can be started. To arm the immobilizer, turn off the engine and remove the ignition key. The immobilizer will arm automatically after two minutes. If you're unsure of the security code, then do not start this procedure. If the security code is entered incorrectly five times, the immobilizer will lock for 15 minutes. In this event, it's recommended that you contact the machine owner for confirmation of the security code. To clear the system, key the machine off and immediately back on. Leave the machine for a minimum of 15 minutes. After 15 minutes, key off the ignition, then key on and enter the correct code. The green LED will come on and the machine can be started. The unique key immobilizer system uses a special ignition key that's supplied with the machine. You can only use this ignition key to start or operate the machine. This key can be identified by its larger body and a radio signal symbol on the key shaft. The machine will only recognize keys that have been linked to it, so it's very important that keys are marked up and stored correctly. Additional keys can be ordered through the machine provider or the local JCB dealer. Before turning on the ignition, ensure the machine is in neutral and the handbrake is applied. Start the engine, ensuring no warning lights are left illuminated. Machine information can be found on the dash display. This is navigated with the information button. To check for any active faults on the machine, use the information button to navigate to the hospital symbol. Press and hold the information button until the screen changes. This will then display any current faults. To return to the main display, press and then hold the information button. To check the foot brake, press down on the brake pedal, making sure the pedal does not go to the floor and you can feel pressure in the pedal. The park brake must be fully engaged when the lever is vertical. The park brake warning icon must come on when the park brake is engaged. To check the park brake, Raise the boom to the appropriate travel position. Select fourth gear. Push down hard on the brake pedal. Select forward drive. The park brake warning light must illuminate. If the machine starts to move during the park brake test, immediately apply the foot brake and reduce the engine speed. Next, move the park brake lever fractionally forward until the park brake warning light is just extinguished. Slowly release the foot brake pedal. If the machine has not moved, use the accelerator to gradually increase the engine speed to 1500 RPM. The machine should not move. Do not do this test for longer than 20 seconds. After the test, reduce the engine to idle, select neutral and fully apply the park brake. Lower the attachment to the ground. If the machine has moved during the test, then report it immediately. Check the reverse alarm is functioning by releasing the park brake with your foot on the brake pedal. Select reverse gear and the alarm will sound. Return the machine to neutral and reapply the park brake. If no alarm is heard, report and rectify immediately.
In this section, you will have to check your machine's operation. These checks must only be carried out by a trained operator. If at any point you do not understand a check or test, please refer to the operator's manual. Following the cab function checks, next test the hydraulic system. Before testing, all three stage booms need to be fully retracted to ensure the boom is phased correctly. This is advised at the start and end of all shifts. To test the hydraulics on up to 14 meter 535-140 machines with stabilizers and chassis sway, lift the boom to 30 to 40 degrees. Tilt and crowd the carriage. Lower the boom to 10 degrees. Extend and then fully retract the boom. Test any attachments on the front auxiliaries. Test the sway function fully in both directions. Raise the boom to 20 to 30 degrees and test the sway function has cut out. Lower the stabilizer legs fully and raise the boom above 45 degrees. Test the legs will not lift on the levers. Lower the boom to 30 to 40 degrees. Using the stabilizer locking switch, ensure the legs still will not lift. Lower the boom and lift the legs. Please refer to the operator's manual if you are not sure on any operations explained. To test the hydraulics on the 17 meter 540 170 machine, lift the boom to 30 to 40 degrees. Tilt and crowd the carriage using the tilt lever. Lower the boom down to 10 degrees. Extend and then fully retract the boom. Test any attachments on the front auxiliaries. Test the sway function fully in both directions. Lower the stabilizer legs fully and raise the boom above 45 degrees. Test the legs will not lift on the levers. Lower the boom to 30 to 40 degrees. Using the stabilizer locking switch, ensure the legs still will not lift. Lower the boom and extend the third inter with the switch located on the dash. Retract fully and lift the legs. Please refer to the operator's manual if you're not sure on any operations explained. To test the hydraulics on the 20 meter 540 200 machine, lift the boom to 30 to 40 degrees. Tilt and crowd the carriage using the single lever control. Lower the boom to 10 degrees. Extend and then fully retract the boom. Test any attachments on the front auxiliaries. Test the sway function fully in both directions. Lower the stabilizer legs fully and raise the boom above 45 degrees. Test the legs will not lift on the levers. Lower the boom to 30 to 40 degrees. Using the stabilizer locking switch, ensure the legs still will not lift. Lower the boom and lift the legs. 
please refer to the operator's manual if you are not sure about any operations explained. Test the load control system at the start of each shift. Park the unloaded machine on level ground with the engine running. Apply the park brake and place the forward reverse lever in the neutral position. Ensure the boom is fully retracted. Partly raise and extend the boom. The amber ground mode symbol goes off and the green load mode symbol comes on. Drive the machine forwards. The green load mode symbol goes off and the amber ground mode symbol comes on. Stop the machine. The green load mode symbol comes on and the amber ground mode symbol goes off. Press and release the display button. The lights will flash with an audible tone. Operate the boom lower. The boom should not lower. Press and release the display button. The lights will flash with an audible tone. Operate the boom extend. The boom should not extend. Press and release the display button. The lights will flash with an audible tone. Operate the boom lift. The boom should lift. With the boom slightly extended, press and release the display button. The lights will flash with an audible tone. Operate the boom retract. The boom should retract. Select a suitable load, for example, a pack of blocks. Make sure the machine is on solid, level ground with the park brake applied. With the stabilizers up, lift the boom so that the load is just clear of the ground. Extend the boom slowly and carefully. Watch the LED progress up the scale. Hydraulic operation should slow and then stop when the amber LED flashes. Some machines may be different depending on the age or model, so always check your operator's manual if you are not sure. Do not use the machine if the unit is faulty. Stop and park the machine as soon as safety permits. Switch off the engine. Contact your JCB distributor. The load motion indicator is fitted for your safety and the safety of others working on site. It ensures the machine is not picking up overweight loads that could cause the machine to fail or cause an accident. To ensure the electronic steer mode selector works correctly and is in phase, it is recommended to re-phase the steering modes every 10 hours at the start and end of every shift. This also ensures all modes are working correctly. Select the neutral position on the forward reverse lever. Use the steer mode switch to select two-wheel steer. Turn the steering wheel until the rear wheels lock in position. An icon will appear on the dash detailing the requested change of mode. This will flash while the mode change takes place. Select crab mode and turn the steering wheel until front and rear wheels lock into the crab position. An icon will appear on the dash, detailing the requested change of mode. This will flash while the mode change takes place. Select four-wheel steer. Turn the steering wheel until the wheels are back to the four-wheel steer position. Sensors on the axles prevent the steer mode from changing until the wheels straighten up or pass through the straight ahead position. The front and rear wheels are now in phase. Some machines have a manual lever to change between modes. This should be tested in the same way. You must grease the machine regularly to keep it working efficiently. Regular greasing will also lengthen the machine's working life. The machine must be parked on safe and level ground. Ensure the ignition key is removed, the handbrake is fully applied and the battery isolator key is removed. These checks make sure the machine cannot be started without your knowledge or consent. Remember, while greasing, the correct PPE must be worn. Ensure any spills are cleaned up and waste disposed of correctly. Use only the recommended type of grease, as stated in the manual. Greasing must be done with a grease gun. 
Normally, two strokes of the grease gun are sufficient. Stop greasing when fresh grease appears at the joint. The machine must always be greased after pressure washing or steam cleaning. Greasing should be carried out every 50 hours or once a week. All pivot pins will require greasing. Always check the manual for the correct grease points on your machine. Start with the stabilizer legs. Ensure all three pivot pins are greased. On new models, the stabilizer leg can be lowered, giving easier access to the bottom pivot pin. Grease the boom front pivots. Note that some machines have different pins to grease. Make sure you check the manual. The carriage pivot points are easily accessed. Work around the machine in a set pattern to ensure pins are not missed. The rear boom pivot pins are accessed inside the rear of the boom or chassis. Grease the lift and displacement rams. To access these safely, remove the jury strut located at the front of the chassis. Lift the boom to 20 to 30 degrees. Remove the keys and battery isolator and ensure the handbrake is applied. Access the machine from the offside rear. Have the jury strut and grease gun to hand. Insert the jury strut onto the lift ram from the side, keeping yourself from under the boom. Secure it with the strap. Grease the lift ram at both pivot pins, top and bottom, and grease the displacement ram. Remember to remove the jury strut before lowering the boom. 540 and 540 machines have extra greasing points. The 540 top extension ram has pivots that need greasing. Take care not to grease the bleed nipples on the top front of the ram. The 540 machine uses chain rollers and has additional grease points located top front of the boom and to the rear bottom of the boom. These are accessed when the boom is lifted. Ensure the jury strut is fitted. Please check the manual for all grease locations. Greasing underneath the machine needs extra care. Make sure the handbrake is applied and remove the ignition and battery isolator keys to ensure the machine cannot be started. Some machines may be fitted with prop shaft covers. These can be easily removed. The axle hubs need greasing top and bottom. Remember to replace the cover caps if fitted. If not sealed units, grease the axle UJ. The machine may need to be repositioned to access the grease point. The axle chassis pivots are located to the front and rear of each axle. On larger machines, the steering rams need greasing at both ends. Check the manual for all locations. Rule of thumb, if it pivots, it needs greasing. Do not grease the outside of the inner boom. The 54200 boom uses chains to extend the boom. The chains need to be checked every 50 hours. Located to the rear of the boom is a phasing decal showing the boom sections and how these should be phased. With the boom fully retracted, inspect and check. On top of the boom nose end, a second decal details the correct phasing. If the phasing is different to that shown on the decals, report. Before carrying out a visual inspection of the boom chains, the machine needs to be parked on safe and level ground, ensuring you and the surrounding area are safe and away from any other vehicles. Lower the stabilizer legs and extend the boom fully. Then slightly retract the boom, just releasing the tension on the boom chains. Ensure the ignition key is removed, the handbrake is fully applied and the battery isolator key is removed. These checks make sure the machine cannot be started or moved without your knowledge or consent. Measure the gap between the underside of the chain and the boom top at the midpoint of each span. Check the manual for the correct chain measurements. Starting with the front section, work back measuring each chain. If any chains need adjusting, contact your local JCB dealer or the machine provider. Construction is a busy and demanding industry. The JCB Load All is designed to make site tasks quick, simple and safe. The information provided in this video is to aid you, the driver, to ensure your machine spends as much time at work as possible. Remember, 
daily checks are your responsibility. If at any time you find a problem, always make sure you report the issue. If you are not clear about or do not understand any checks or operations, please refer to the operator's manual or contact your JCB dealer or machine provider.